All right, folks, welcome back to TCI Headquarters. Uh, it's Will and I today. Cameron's had a little bit of, we think, maybe the COVID stuff, so mm -hmm. we're making him stay the heck away. So. Yeah, he's nowhere. He's hopefully, not supposed to be anywhere near us. Hopefully he will be back next week. <laughs> um, all right, we are kind of a weird couple days of press conferences, not coming off a game, but coming off the bye weekend. Yeah. Tiger's getting ready to travel to Miami. Um, we sat in here, on, I guess, Saturday night, Bill, in West Miami, it's got a little better feeling for what they had to offer in their game with North Carolina, but um, I guess let's start with Dabo. Obviously, we'll talk a little bit about the players in, in a minute. But, mm -hmm. um, Dabo uh, talked about several things. Um, I guess one thing we'll talk about, Robert Gunn, he is back kicking. Uh, Dabo said he's back to kind of join the competition a little bit, hopes to create a little more competitive space there. Um, he kind of went through the history and basically sounded like Gun stopped kicking with his injury about the same time they brought in Whites. So yep. We'll see what happens now. Um, talked a little bit about everybody else. Sounds like everybody else is going to be good to go. That's what it sounds like to me. Um, sounds like Antonio Williams and, and Nate Wiggins are going to be ready to play this week. I think that's really good with Nate Wiggins more than Antonio Williams, even though it would be great to have Antonio Williams back. But Miami's pretty good. they got some pretty good wide receivers. And I think, you know, having Nate Wiggins back on the field – especially to cover their best guy, is uh, very important in, uh, to this Clemson defense and what they want to do going forward. So I think that's big news without a doubt. And then just, as you mentioned, the overall health of the team, I think, you know, to come out of the bye week in relatively good shape. Um, yeah, you you got two guys you've already lost for the year, but you, you've been without those guys for a while. So it's right. not like, you know, you're just trying to adjust now. So um I'm interested to see what he does. At, you know, and I'm surprised nobody asked this today. Maybe I should have, but I got busy doing other things, obviously. But um, see what they're going to do at right guard. You know, are they going to are they going to go, you know, with the same old, or are they going to start the true freshman? You know, I'm interested to see what they're going to do, and also at left tackle with Colin Sadler. Does he get to start there at left tackle? He didn't so. talk about starters. He did talk about it. You know, guard. They both those guys will play mm -hmm. again this week. He said, obviously, we got to go through this week's practice. And all of that, um, you know, that's certainly with Parks out, certainly something that's impacted the, the offense. No doubt it has. It's hurting sure. the continuity. Yep. Now, the good news is, and, you know, as you mentioned, they're getting several guys in at a couple of positions, so they're uh -huh. building that depth, which will help them if they have more injuries or hopefully just get them, you know, played up a little bit, so to speak, for, for the future. Um, Davo talked, I uh, had to react to actually – one of the things he said on the radio show last night, which Gavin wrote about, he ran this morning. Um, basically, the topic, you know, what he said last night, which caused some eyebrows, was he said, yeah, he basically said, you know, maybe we'll lose some of the bandwagon fans with a couple losses, but that may be not a bad thing. Right. Um, the 1.5%. He was asked about that today, and he went more into that, and you mm -hmm. wrote about his comments today. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about how, what he responded to that. Yeah, so he was asked about his comments from last night when Dabo says, you mentioned, you know, they'll be okay if they lose the bandwagon fans. And he mentioned, he said, okay, 98.5% of Clemson fans are great, are amazing, was his exact quote. And But he says there's that 1.5%, he says – they think they're helping, but actually they're hurting. And I thought that was interesting the way he said that. He says, you're not solving a problem, you're causing a problem. And that was very interesting to me because I, I want to know more like what he meant by that, that line. Like, okay, what is the problem then, that 1.5%? Obviously, they are causing a problem. You probably got a better idea than I do on what that might be. But obviously, for Dabo to say that, then he, he's got something that proves that. For him to say there's 1.5% is causing a problem instead of solving problems. So um, I thought it was pretty interesting what he said, and he kind of stuck to what he said originally last night that, uh, you know, hey, look, I appreciate the fans that are with us through the tough times and the good times, and those fans that are only with us for the good times. You know, he's like, he does, you know, they can come on when they want to. Other than that, he's not going to worry about them. You know, that's kind of the gist of it. He went I guess. more in depth than I thought. I thought he would just say, oh, no, you know, I, I love the fans and just leave right. it at that. And he kind of started that, said that at the beginning, but typical dad, but once he starts talking, he kind of. He kind of, his he true feelings come out. elaborate on everything. Yeah, and the 90, the 1.5%, that's, that, to me, that was interesting because. When he said that's the way it is at every school. When yeah, he did. We he said there. Alabama, he says, I've been doing this 21 years. We got Clemson, he says, 13 years at Alabama, it was that way. He's like, you know, and, and he says it comes with the territory when you win. 
you know, people want you to win all the time, but the realist, but that says you got to be a realist and understand that winning's hard, and to win at this level consistently is not easy. That they've been doing, and um, and they have done it. I mean, people don't talk about this enough, <clears throat> and it's probably because Alabama on the same run during the same time Clemson's is. Clemson's on one of the greatest runs in the history of college football. They are. And people don't understand that. Like, so that is hard to maintain that level when you've gone 13 or 12 straight years to this point at 10 wins every year. And you've won eight ACC championships during that time. You've played in four national championship games and won two. It's one of the greatest runs in the history of college football. And I don't care what your name is. Clemson's done something that only two other teams have done before them. That'd be Florida State and this current Alabama team. So people understand what you're witnessing with Clemson. It is, it is historic. It's going to be talked about years later, years after this. And so just appreciate, you know, what we're in, what we've been experiencing all these years. It's pretty good. Not everybody gets to do this, you know. Well, and I think, you know, obviously fans are – Fans are fans, so they're going to look for the negative, some of them, and talk about, you know, obviously things Clemson they feel like could be doing differently to get the team better. And, you know, I tell you, you know, we listen, I listened, Gavin and I, every Monday to the show, the radio show, and the questions are a lot tougher right now. You know, you've got a tr- typical list of got folks that call <coughs> in every week, and they're usually just kind of rah-rah, and, you know, oh, I want to come see you sometime, and just, you know, standard callers that basically say nothing. But this last... Uh, three or four weeks, he's getting some hard questions on that show. Yeah, and questions he's not getting in the press conference. And, and yeah, you know, that's true. You're accurate. And and the thing that's interesting about that, those guys that are calling Dabo's show, those are real fans, because the bandwagon fans don't jump on and call on the Dabo Sweeney show. The real fans are the ones that are always calling on Dabo's show. So when a fan calls you asking a question on your show. He's 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 a he's one of the real ones. He's one of the ones that support you. And when you're calling and asking on the radio, you're not some hiding behind some message board ID that where nobody knows who you are. That's true. On the internet, you're you know you give your name, may not be your co- real name, unless you got a burner phone. On the radio, so unless it's a burner phone, it comes up. There are people out there that know, that hear your voice, that know that you know that's who's asking the questions. Right. So, you know, hopefully Clemson will finish strong and get that ten wins streak again this year and keep things going. Um, anything else you want to hit on from Dabo? Um, you mentioned the kicker um, situation. You mentioned the injuries. Um, just going down the line. Um, I, he, got I, I got one that was interesting, and I don't know what it means or not, but he only spent three minutes on Miami. I found that interesting. I don't, that doesn't mean anything. But Dabo has before when Clemson's played a big game. So he spends a lot more time on the opponent. He only spent three minutes. His whole opening press Opening statement, which is usually sometimes we've known could run 15 minutes, ran only three minutes tops. Spent probably two minutes of that on Miami. Found that very interesting. I don't know if that means anything or not, but I just found it interesting. Well, one of the other just little <coughs> stories he did, um, Clay Sweeney had met with the media, I guess, last week. Oh, yes, that's right. He talked about how he was able to beat Dabo in basketball, and Dabo said, no, 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 that's not the case. Like, he beats me every now and then, but Dabo says – you know, he didn't agree with that part of his press conference. Yeah, the beatdown he didn't uh, agree with. Yes, and he went on to say he beat him in uh, pickleball mm-hmm. this weekend. So, he, he did, Dabo was defending himself a, a little bit in that respect. All right, you got some players. Uh, I think today was freshman day. Got to hear from a lot of the, the freshmen. What are yeah. some of the highlights from that? Yeah, uh, Avion Terrell was there. First time we've got to speak with him. Um he uh, he talked about his brother and that relationship and, and really how it kind of spurred his relationship with Clemson and how he became a Clemson fan. And he's kind of talked to me and you about this stuff in the past, um, about how, you know, how he became a Clemson fan um, at a young age because of his brother and really just kind of has always just dreamed about playing here. He didn't want to play anywhere else. Loves Coach Sweeney. Talked about that relationship with Coach Sweeney that he has. And um, and then talked about, you know, just getting himself on the field. He's one of three or four guys that are true freshmen that's played in every game. Um, and he talked about how much that's meant to him to get out there on the field and be able to contribute right away. And, yeah, so he was a good one uh, to talk, uh, today. Um, also talked to uh, Jamal Anderson, mm-hmm. whose uh, daddy, you know, was – the Dirty Bird, invented the Dirty Bird dance, uh, Jamal Anderson Sr. Uh, and uh, so he was asked about, you know, 
hey, did you play? Uh, did you want to play linebacker too? And he said he did, but he's too tall. He's like, I got two or three inches taller than my dad. He says, which I let my dad know all the time. Mm-hmm. And um, he says, so it was harder for him to play running back, so they moved to linebacker. And he said it kind of sucked at first. He didn't want to – he likes – playing running back and, you know, scoring touchdowns and things like that. But then as he got to hit a couple guys and started hitting people, kind of started liking it more. And he said now he's like – he's like now I don't know if I would ever want to play anything else but play linebacker. So he, he was pretty good to talk to too. Also I uh, got to talk to Jonathan Whites again. Um, he bleached his hair, by the way. He cut it short, gave himself a buzz cut, and, and bleached it blonde. And um, does that gonna help him make it? I don't. I don't know. But he, he was asked about like why did you uh, change your hairstyle? And he said, you know, I was just sitting there and we were talking about short haircuts. He says, oh, I think I'll get a buzz cut. And uh, I think it was Clay Sweeney or one of the others says, no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't do that. He says, yeah, why? I don't care. And he's like, so he went and, went and cut his hair off. And then he's like, hey, I'll just bleach it too. He says, I figured. I don't have to worry about getting a real job for a little bit. He's like, so, how his New York employer thinks about he says, so I'm going to go ahead and do it now because he says, um, he says, because when I get back into the real world, I won't be able to have that kind of hairstyle. Right. And, um, and so he says, I'm going to do it now. He says, nah, once again, when I retire, I'll try to do it again. He says, but I probably won't have any hair when he retires. That's probably right. That's 40 years from now. So, okay. so he's talking retirement from his real job, not his football Not his football job. He's talking about his real job as a best investment and banker. Career. Yeah. All right, well, there's a summary of some of the uh, interviews we had this week. Uh, a little bit lighter week. Things pick back up. Obviously, big stretch games coming up. Clemson needs to find a way to go 6-0. and uh, We'll put a story up. We ran yesterday as well on the different ways for paths for Clemson to fight their way back into the ACC championship game. So we'll certainly talk more about that in the next few weeks, and we'll be tracking that. And check out Will's story. He's got all the tiebreakers, which is going to – be one of the critical things that might come into play down the road if uh, Clemson can have some things fall their way. But most importantly, they got to keep winning and basically win out. So yep. stay tuned to Clemson Insider for the most complete coverage of Clemson Athletics. This is Miles Murphy. Make sure to check out Clemson Insider's most complete football coverage. Nobody does it better.